Hello, my name is Maria Considine King and I'm the Director of Practice Management at Commonwealth Financial Network. I'm joined today by Simon Heslop, who's the Director of Asset Management at Commonwealth. Simon, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Maria. Your August market commentary focused on heightened volatility in the markets. What happened during the month? Well, we saw heightened volatility for sure in August. Uh, and August was actually setting up to be a fairly disastrous month. But on the last eight trading days, we saw equity markets rally, actually helping us from a much worse outcome. Uh, for the end of the month, we saw the S&P lower by a little bit over 5%. We saw the Dow lower by a little bit over 4%. But in those last eight trading days, we saw the S&P gain a little bit over 8% and the Dow a little bit over 7%. So again, the month could have been a lot worse than was indicated. Was it bad for all investors? Well, unfortunately, it was bad for most investors. European investors had a, a much worse outcome than here in the U.S. on some of the heightened fears of increased problems surrounding the debt situation. And as a result, global markets also sold off potentially worried that some of this would spill over and help to slow the uh, global economic recovery. But it wasn't all bad. I mean, we had gold up dramatically and we had treasuries higher, um, mostly on a, uh, on a fair trade, mostly uh, people pouring into uh, these safe assets, if you will. What do you think caused the problems? Well, I think there's four key reasons why. The first, as we went into this, we saw uh, the discussions in Washington over the debt ceiling and the potential to raise it. And we saw substantial market volatility as Washington was trying to sort out um, what they were going to do with the debt ceiling. And that discussion was probably a big catalyst to why the S&P downgraded uh, U.S. debt, which was a second problem. And as I alluded to before, a third problem was the increased fears over the European debt situation and the fact that that may spread and indeed hurt the economy. And last but certainly not least, we also saw some potential for slowing in the U.S. economic recovery. Uh, we're seeing some of the economic growth numbers come in a little bit lighter. GDP uh, just around seven-tenths for the first half of the year. And although positive, uh, created some concerns and again led to some of the heightened volatility. And all this happened as the Federal Reserve vowed to keep rates low through the middle of 2013. Some would expect that to calm the markets. Why didn't it? Well, that's correct, and the Fed actually made an unusual uh, decision in as much as they told us that they would keep interest rates low, no surprise there, but they also told us they'd do it with a target date of middle of 2013. And although some, including myself, would have thought this should have calmed markets, uh, most of market participants were probably looking beyond this and looking at the potential that uh, it actually meant the Fed was a lot more concerned about the economy than they led, to, led us to believe. So markets, again, saw um, quite a bit of volatility and some downward pressure. And so you mentioned that bond investors tended to do well in August, but was it all bond investors who benefited? Well, yes, that's very interesting. Uh, those in treasuries, particularly longer dated treasuries, um, did, did very well. We saw interest rates come off, at least in the 10-year, come off by almost 60 basis points. So prices, prices moved up sharply as people were buying treasuries. But this left some short. Uh, many fund managers went into this with a shorter bias, fearing longer term uh, treasury securities because of the potential for price risk if we saw interest rates move back higher. So many fund managers actually fell short of their benchmarks uh, over August as a result of the dramatic move. But other areas such as high yield bonds, bank loans, uh, areas that investors have been fairly interested re in recently uh, didn't do so well. Some uh, correlation to equities and some fears um, surrounding the credit worthiness of some of these companies uh, led those two fixed income asset classes to sell off over the month. And what should investors do at this point? Well, August tested investors who had a comprehensive investment plan in place. Many investors went into August with a limited treasury exposure, concerned over rising interest rates, only to be hurt, uh, you know, given the dramatic move in interest rates. But we have been advocating for a somewhat conservative strategy, and now that prices have actually moved higher in treasuries, we, we emphasize this even more. So it's important for investors not to react to this situation and to stay the course and, and keep aligned with this, with this plan. For equity investors, we've now seen equities move considerably lower 
And some could look at this, that valuations are actually more compelling at these levels. Um, you definitely have seen an oversold situation in the equity market. And so you saw a lot of investors coming in with some strong buying in uh, the, the, the last few days of August. So I think it's important not to react to markets and know that most investors who tend to buy as prices move lower tend to have better outcomes over the longer run uh, than those that do the opposite. September is historically one of the most volatile months for the market. Does the potential of that trend continuing affect your view at all? Well, it, it really doesn't. September historically has been one of the worst performing months, but again, I think it's this keen focus on a longer term strategy that's very important and not to react to markets. But I do think it's important for investors to look at their overall portfolio positioning just to make sure that they're aligned with their longer term investment goals and objectives. Great. Thank you for joining me, Simon. Thank you very much, Maria.